SpongeBob SquarePants is the best animated series of all time. Wait, no, let me rephrase that. The first four or so seasons of SpongeBob SquarePants are undoubtedly among the best animation ever produced. The writing, the relatable characters, nautical adventures, it had everything. And then, something changed. The show didn't feel the same anymore, and the show eventually continued to spiral to the point of the infamous rotten seasons that people loathe. But why did this happen? How did a show that was once so highly regarded fall so far from its former glory to get to the point where we are now, Spongebob toiling in the mediocrity of its 13th season? Now you have to understand a couple of things before moving forward. You see, the creator of the show, Steven Hillenburg, was very hands-on in the production of Spongebob in its first three seasons and its theatrical release. Then, he left, as he felt the show had run its course and it was time to leave. Nickelodeon, however, said, I like money. For many fans, this time period marks a significant decline in the quality of the show. Some may argue that seasons 4, 5, and even 6 aren't a part of this phase, but regardless, what was the reason of this decline? Well, I believe it all has to do with the flanderization of its characters. Now, that's quite a big word, so what does it mean? Flanderization is the process through which a fictional, formerly complex character's essential traits are oversimplified to being their entire personality, or at least exaggerated, while other traits remain. There are many examples of this in animation in general. Many characters from The Simpsons, Family Guy, Rick and Morty, and Dragon Ball Super have been accused of being victims of this phenomenon. But I believe that SpongeBob has some of the most egregious and damaging examples of this. The characters above all are what made the show so captivating to watch in the first place. Seeing characters interacting with one another in different settings and situations, and the jokes that would ensue because of this, is for me the defining factor that made Spongebob so fun as a kid. And nowhere is this problem more noticeable than with the three main characters themselves. This is exactly how I pictured your band would look. Season 1 through 3 Spongebob is great. He's an enthusiastic, fun-loving adult who cares about the people around him and just wants to fulfill his duties at the Krusty Krab to the best of his abilities. Prime examples of this are in episodes like Pickles, Fun, The Bully, and Pizza Delivery. True, while he may be a nuisance to Squidward, the key is that Spongebob is never malicious, nor outright ignorant with his intent. This changes later in the show, though. In some of the show's worst episodes, he's a whiny, crying, ignorant man-child who often Oftentimes does nothing but cause problems for others, particularly Squidward. Prime examples of this include A Day Without Tears, Toy Story of Doom, and A Pal for Gary. Now, you would think that SpongeBob, the main character being flanderized so heavily, would ultimately be the downfall of the show, but it isn't. In fact, SpongeBob is probably the least prominent example of this situation in the whole show. Yes, while True, his character did go through this weird phase, for the most part, in the later seasons, it has been reverted back to what we know and love, which is great. It's Squidward, however, where things get interesting. <laughs> is he gone? Who was that? Is someone there? Hello? Squidward is the man who people in our community will constantly remind you is the most relatable character in the show. He's a grumpy, disinterested, and apathetic character, which makes sense. Just ask anyone working in the fast food industry as a cashier, you'll realize it isn't the most fulfilling job. The thing that makes Squidward relatable to most is that he has dreams. He loves the arts. He wants to paint, sculpt, play clarinet, compose music. He has something he wants to pursue, but is constantly being rejected by the establishments that need to accept. Him. He's complex in that way. So how do they ruin this? Well, the problem actually has less to do with Squidward as a character, and more with how the writing of these awful episodes treats him that derails him. You may have heard the term Squidward torture porn being thrown around, and it basically refers to any episode that bullies Squidward for no particular reason. Are You Happy Now is a good example, and it's considered by many to be one of, if not the worst episode in the whole show. Squidward has his entire day ruined, and is driven to an unsettling deep depressive state that has never been seen before, all because Spongebob tried to give him his happiest memory. Not only is it incredibly depressing to see Squidward tortured, but it happens over and over and over and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, 
and the next day it seems like every time he's the focus of an episode he's being tortured it's a problem so relevant that it still plagues the show today with episodes like squidward's sick days and ink lemonade to have a character that was once so complex and meaningful be derailed to just the object of torture over and over again isn't the best thing in the world to have for probably the most relatable adult character in the show however nothing compares to what patrick has gone through in the series <laughs> Dots. I ordered plaid. You'll have to take it back, Mr. Mailman. <laughs> Patrick is probably the biggest example to everything that can go wrong when a crew forgets what makes a character endearing. He started off as a lovable yet kinda slow character but you could tell he meant well. He's just a lovable glutton so how could they possibly mess him up? Well how about instead of being a lovable glutton, he's just a glutton. That's literally his character now. While it's true that he's always had an affinity for food, it was never the forefront of his character. But for whatever reason the writers have decided to take his character into a direction where that becomes his entire motivation in most of his appearances. Nowhere is this more explicit than in the Patrick Star show. You'd think that a main character would have more defining traits than eating food and being oh so silly and goofy but that's not what these writers seem to think. Now at this point in the video you may be thinking to yourself, how could this have happened? How could so much have gone wrong with the three main characters of the most recognizable show of all time? I mean it's not like these writers aren't talented, they've written great stuff before, so what the hell happened? Well, the answer to that question doesn't actually lie within the show, or the writers, or anything of that sort. It all lies within the company that allowed the show to air in the first place, Nickelodeon. We have to remember that Nickelodeon is a business, and making money is at the forefront of their objective list. Remember, it was Nickelodeon that wanted to keep the show going without Hillenburg. After the movie, Hillenburg felt like it was time to end the show so it wouldn't jump the shark, in his own words. But there was a problem. Nickelodeon wanted more. In the words of Sam Henderson, a storyboard director for the show, the show was such a cash cow for the station that it couldn't afford not to. This isn't the only time they've meddled with Spongebob, far from it. Nickelodeon originally wanted Spongebob to be a kid who went to school because they allegedly thought that kids wouldn't want to see a show about an adult. But even worse than trying to mess with the creator's vision was them trying to force the production team to put out an absurd amount of episodes in a limited amount of time in order to keep ratings up and the money flowing. This in my opinion ultimately led to the rotten seasons we ended up getting. There was simply too much pressure on the writers to crank out new ideas and not having time to properly flesh out and fix any mistakes in their stories. Corporate meddling has ultimately led to where the show is now. While there were signs of hope when Steven Hillenburg returned and shortly after his unfortunate passing, with great episodes like Feral Friends, Chef Bob, Mimic Madness, and even the 20th anniversary special, it's clear that Spongebob hasn't been the same unfortunately. Instead, toiling in the mediocrity of mid-episodes in season 13, and the uninspired soullessness of Camp Coral and the Patrick Star Show. Nickelodeon quite simply doesn't care. They don't care about the show outside of anything that has to do with the money. And I get it, Nickelodeon's a business. Its main concern will obviously be the money, but constantly mistreating the legacy of your most iconic show and its creator is not the way they should be doing it. But why would they care? A cash cow is a cash cow. And as we've seen over the course of the last year, companies like Nick, HBO, and Netflix will do anything for that one extra dollar. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this new style of content I'm experimenting with. This video was heavily inspired by the good folks of Nerdstalgic, who have been an inspiration to me for the longest time. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos like this along with the episodic reviews, so if that's something you're into, consider subscribing so that you never miss another upload. Have a good day, and take care.